it's another wachi recipe today as i promised you i'm going to share a wachi recipe with the leaves the first recipe was without the leaves and this one is with the leaves as some of you already know my mom used to sell wachi for years so this is her original recipe because as i told you in my previous wachi recipe that is the wachi we prepare when we are home for home but the one we sell this is how we prepare it so today I'm spilling all the secrets out for you and also as a bonus recipe I'm going to show you how to make the local shito. I've had a few comments asking the local, the proper local shito. So I'm going to share that recipe as well with you. So make sure you stay tuned till the end of this video. I'll write the list of ingredients in the description box down below. I will also share a few other links in the description box that may be useful so you want to check it out. I would also like to say a big thank you to all those lovely comments that you guys have been leaving me. Thank you so much. You don't know how that makes me feel when I read, when I read those comments. So keep them coming. <laughs> Enough of the talking now, let's go ahead and start preparing our wachi. This is Lamy Cooks and welcome to my kitchen. As we all know, wachi leaves has a lot of health benefits. It's packed with essential antioxidants which protects you from diseases. So it's really good if you have the chance to use it, use it in your wachi because it has a lot of health benefits. Now, I'm just going to take a handful of it because that's too much, I'm not going to use everything. So just about a handful size of it and I'm going to rinse it. Now you, again, you don't know where your ingredients are coming from. So, And this watch leaves traveled all the way from Ghana here. So I will just like to rinse it a little bit before I use it. Run it under water, make sure I open them and then I'll rinse it properly before I use it. After rinsing it, I'll find a very big bowl. You need a big bowl because you're going to put a lot of water. You're, literally, you're going to soak it. So I'll use this my bowl, I'll put it in and then make sure it fits properly. I'll add some cow, about um, five to six pieces. That's like a medium size. So I'll add that to it and then I'll add water to cover everything so i just add water to fill the whole bowl i will soak it for a minimum of four to six hours if i want to use it to cook the same day however i'm cooking my watch it the next day so i prefer to soak it for 24 hours soaking the leaves makes you get the best out of it and as well you don't have to be picking it out once your watch is cooked I've never tried cooking the leaves with the watch at the same time. I always soak it this way because of course, this is how we used to do it. So it's overnight now and you can see how red the water is. Now let's go ahead and start cooking the watch. I have three cups of beans and then three cups of rice as well to cook my watch with. Because I soaked my watch leaves overnight, the water is very concentrated. So I'm going to use six cups of the water and then I'll use two cups of regular water otherwise the water will be too red so I'm going to mix it with a little bit of water just to dilute the color a little bit and I usually like to strain it just to make sure nothing passes through I'm now going to go ahead and add my three cups of beans which I've washed nicely now, if you've soaked your beans overnight, because some people prefer to soak their beans before they cook it because it helps with the gas, but I cook it straight away. So if you soaked your beans, make sure the water starts boiling before you add the beans, because the beans would have been already soft. It's been 15 minutes now, my beans have been cooking, so I'm going to check it now. Um, the beans has to be cooked halfway through. So I'm just going to break one or two of them to make sure it's cooked halfway. So as you can see, the sides are cooked, but the inside is still hard. It's still hard. So 
So this is when you want to add your rice. Don't add it in too early and don't add it in too late. So just make sure the beans should be able to split into two when you touch it and then it should be a little bit cooked from the outside. Now I've added my three cups of rice which is washed as well and then some salt to taste. As I said in my previous watch video, the ratio of beans to rice is up to your preference but the best ratio is 50-50 but some people don't like a lot of beans so they tend to add more rice instead of beans but the best watch or the watch that tastes good is the one with lots of beans so 50-50 is the best ratio but if you don't like a lot of beans feel free to make it 60 40 or 70 30. so i'm going to stir my watch and then i'll let it cook at this stage you need to keep an eye because you know how beans can bubble and <laughs> can bubble over your your pan and your stove so just make sure you keep an eye on it if need be you can leave it open the watcher has been cooking for about 10 minutes now but i stirred in between just to make sure it doesn't stick to the pan you can tell the water has been absorbed by the rice and beans I'm checking to see how cooked it is if I need to add more water but the water is perfect with the measurements it's perfect so at this stage I'm going to cover it then I'll let the steam do the final cooking for me as you can see I'm trying to fix it so that nothing <laughs> comes out I like to trap the steam in the watch so that it cooks slowly and I'm going to reduce the heat as well I'm going to cook it on low heat for about 10 minutes It's been 10 minutes, so I'm going to check on the watcher to make sure the rice and the beans is fully cooked through. Now, make sure the water from the steam doesn't get into the watcher because you've measured the water and you don't want it to be too soft either. So you can see I was carefully removing the plastic so the water doesn't drop in the watcher. Now, look at that beauty. Look at that. I'm just going to give it a quick stir check the softness of the rice and then the softness of the beans if it's cooked but i'll need some more time so i'll cover it again and let it cook for another five to ten more minutes It's been another 10 minutes, so I'm going to check on the watch. Mm. You know what? You know, watch is that food that when you're cooking, you can even smell it from the corridor. Yes, this is it. Once the watch is at this stage, when I opened it, it was all over. My husband was in the living room. He came and said, ah, is the watch ready? Because I can smell it. Yes, it smells so delicious. The watch is all done. Now let's go ahead and make the shito. The ingredients are two large onions that I've quartered and then some smoked tuna that I'm going to mash them into bits. I'm going to break them into little, little pieces. you see in the video ahead. And I also have here some dried shrimp powder, some dried herring powder. And I also have my spice mix, which I'll leave the link in the description box. And I also have my chili crushed chili, chili pepper and then some oil now let's go ahead and start making the shito with this recipe all ingredients are pounded using a mortar and a pestle but because i don't have it i'm going to use my food processor and it does the job well the food processor helps give the rough texture i'm looking for To my pan, I'm going to add about a cup of oil and then I'm going to add the onions, the roughly chopped onions. You need a lot of onions because you know this is shit also, it's a lot of onions. I've had questions in my previous shito video why I don't add tomato paste to my shito. Now, um, traditionally you don't add tomato paste to your shito, however, you can add if you so wish because I've seen a lot of shito recipes with tomato paste as well. I personally don't prefer adding tomato paste to my shito. 
So I'm going to go ahead and add my mixed spices, which has ginger, cloves, anise, star anise. If you don't have the mixed spice, you can just use ginger and lots of it. You can tell I used a lot of the spices because shito, again, you need ginger. And locally, the ginger would have been powdered in the pesto and mortar. But you see, it will all come out the same. I'm going to stir this for about five minutes and then I'll go ahead and add the chili. I'm adding just a tablespoon of chili because my kids are going to eat the shito and if I put too much chili to make it too spicy, they will not eat it. So I just added a little bit. But original recipe, please add about four times this chili if you want it really spicy. So again, the chili is according to your taste. Once the chili cooks down and the flavors combine for about five minutes, I'll go ahead and then add the flaked tuna. So this is what I told you about. I flaked it with the hands. So I made sure I broke it into pieces to just have this flaky consistency. So I'm going to add that to the uh, mixture. As I told you, the fish would have been pounded using the mortar and pestle but you know what we are improvising everything here so we're trying to make it look like we pounded everything so everything is roughly chopped or roughly um, grinded now this is where you don't have to leave your kitchen because you burn the shito make sure you stand by your shito at this stage the oil wasn't enough so i added a little bit of oil you know shito it's a lot of oil you need a lot of oil for shito so i added a little bit but continue stirring until it's cooked yes please don't leave it and go watch tv <laughs> if you're enjoying this video please don't forget to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe as well The shito has been cooking for 10 minutes already and you can see the color has started to change. I'm now going to add the dried herrings and then the shrimp powder. At this stage, if you have any seasoning, you can add it as well. I'm going to continue frying until my shito is well fried and the water has all been absorbed. It's been 15 minutes of cooking and you can see how the color has changed. At this stage, I'll add my salt as the shito is coming together. Although there's still bits of the tuna, which is still yet to be fried, but I can add the salt at this stage. And also correct the seasoning if I need to. I'll continue cooking for another five to 10 minutes. It's been five minutes and the shito is all done. All you need is your wache which is ready. And you know this wache you don't even need gari, macaroni and all that. You just need your wache, the shito and a little bit of the shito oil. Uh, yes, that's how we eat it locally. Try this yummy licious. If you haven't tried your wache with just the shito, this local shito, give it a try and let me know in the comment section below what you think. If you've watched this video till now, I would like you to leave me a comment in the comment section writing, yes, I did. Thank you so much for sticking around. And if you also want to know how I preserve the rest of the soaked wache leaves, check out the description box down below. I'll write it all there. Until I come your way again with another yummy delicious recipe, take care. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this video. Bye.